welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Nurchuk, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. I got it, Ma. Like riding a bike. Episode 1002. You know, we don't have the same cadence we had back in the day, Ma, where we would do five a week. These are once every, you know, six months, four months, uh, year, but I'm excited to be back at Wine Library. Uh, filming this episode and uh, and we are going blind bag for episode 1002 around Brunello di Montalcino, Sangiovese based wines uh, from the Tuscan region in Italy. Brunello is a, is a a wine that I probably still get most asked about as I as I fly around the world and do all my business meetings in the social media marketing world. A lot of people know me from and uh, know the history of this show and this store and, and the things we've done and it's really interesting to me when I think about what wines people ask me about or can you recommend a good blank, um, it, you know, I would say Brunello is probably one of the two or three things that people continue to ask me about. And obviously we came back and did the return episode of Wine Library TV, th one, episode 1001, and I, I knew that I wanted to make 1002 a blind bag tasting, so I reached out to Brandon and said, hey, how are we sitting? You got some Brunellos running around? Uh, uh, and he said, yeah, 2010 being a great vintage, so hopefully there's a couple here. Actually have no feel of the wines, just like we used to do it, even more so Mott. At least back in the day, I knew the kind of wines this store carried. Um, by the way, for anybody watching this for the first time, this is not my mother filming. I would say probably the best joke that we ever had during our, our careers of this episode was every time I would say Mott, in the comments, people would say, oh, it's really cool that your mother films your show. Now this is Chris Mott, and just for context, this is where my anger will come in. We used to do t-shirts for the show, and Link It Up Mott, was the number one selling t-shirt. Chris, you became like a cult figure above and beyond. You were like more popular than I was. No. Well, I think so. Anyway, nonetheless, I'm excited about tasting these wines. I myself am a pretty big Brunello fan. Um, a lot of people drink Sanjo in the Chianti form, in the basic form, but when you get up to this level, um, it really becomes a great ex expression of of the, the grape, of the region, and more importantly to me, what's interesting, you know, calling a spade a spade, I am right now in my, my journey of wine leaning more towards Barolo and Nebbiolo and, and enjoy those wines more, but I will say what's been interesting watching the wine market from a business standpoint, I believe Brunello is still grossly underpriced for what it delivers, and the fact that you can still get really high quality wines in the $25 to $70 range is intriguing. I think that sweet spot of $40 is really good to go, which will probably be at about 100 bucks, uh, 80 bucks, uh, 70 bucks on a wine list, depending on what city you're in. And so if you've not explored Brunello, and obviously also taking into account a lot of people watching this have become people that have become aware of me over the last three or four years and are more in the marketing and business realm, um, one of the things that I'm very proud of with Wine Library TV and the thousand episodes that I filmed over that five year period was we made a lot of people go out and try different wines, different things. And uh, if you're somebody who's watching right now who's obsessed with California cabs or a Pinot Noir drinker, please, please, please try to figure out how to get a bottle of Brunello uh, into your world and try it. So let's see what happens here. The blind taste, you know, Mott, another thing a lot of people don't know is, you know, when I look back at the blind tastings, there's been a lot of 0 for 4 episodes. Yes, there were. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. And my palate's in a really kind of different place too, so it'll be interesting to see where I sit with Brunello lately. For example, a little like, little like disclosure that's kind of disappointing to the old version of myself. I'm stunned how much I like California Chardonnay these days. Um, you know, I don't know if they've gotten a little less oaky or if I've gotten older and prefer it. Um, but you know, the palate keeps evolving and so it'll be interesting to see where we go. So unlike normal when you zoom in, here it is, the bag, wine number one. Let's get into it. First thing you'll notice for a lot of you that are you know, somewhat into wine, moderate or, or somewhat knowledgeable is the color. This is not the pitch black that you get from, you know, a lot of Bordeaux's now, uh, a lot of California cabs. This is, gets a little bit lighter. You can see your fingers through it. This gets into the Pinot coloring a little bit more. Now the nose is already exploding. I haven't even gotten close yet. Uh, this is where smell vision would be so great if technology could catch up. You'd be shocked on how much my general area in this room is already covered by this sour cherry flavor. Let's, yeah, I mean this is, this is extremely, extremely aromatic. This is something, also I'll be, for, probably from episode 1001 to 1010, I'll do a lot of refer referencing in the back and then I'll keep going through the years. One thing I've always been 
probably over-indexing on is aromatics and the nose of a wine. The sniffy sniff, that little shtick I had came from that. It was to bring a little more glamour or awareness to the nose. I think most of you do not smell your wines enough. And to me, there have been wines through my career that I've enjoyed just by smelling. I preferred it to the taste, but I didn't care because I just was in love with the aromatics and just smelling the wine. This wine has a great, great floral nose. I would say almost like crushed rose petals. A little a little chalkiness, a little smokiness, but very sour kind of cherry fruit on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Nice ripe tannins. I, I always call it like a copper penny. Um, flavor on, on some of the um, uh, Italian reds, specifically Brunello that I've liked. Uh, a little hint of leather coming through and quite sour bitter. My, my mouth is extremely dry on the finish. Really well structured red fruit, but a little bit hollow on the mid palate, which is a big transition flavor for me and quite important. Solid wine, good structure, well made, but uh, not, not something, actually, come on, I forgot, I usually have a pen here. Can, anybody got a pen? Sam? Uh, Alright, I'm gonna kind of do my little score here. Let's keep it going, let's keep it going, let's give it a little rinse. Let's go to wine number two, Mott. It's even lighter in color as I rinse. Let's do a zoom in. A little rusty there, monster. Yeah. I know with the bags was always a weird thing, like did we zoom in on them, did we not? This wine's even lighter, lighter in color, which is not always an indicator that it's lighter or things of that nature, just uh, a fun thing to kind of pay attention to. Uh, the nose is even more closed than a prior wine, less aromatics. As a matter of fact, very little coming through on the nose, so this wine feels quite tight on the aromatics. I can get a little bit of black fruit. Let's give it a whirl. Fuller mouthfeel. This goes on the attack uh, on the palate, which is interesting. Also very dry wine. A little bit of hint of rhubarb, which I like quite a bit, uh, especially in the pie, even though I don't eat pie these days, Mom. Get, I'm much better shape than I was. You're like, like lean and mean now. You like it, right? Appreciate it. Anyway, completely covers the palate. Uh, a little rhubarb, uh, a little hint of um, cherry again, very common theme for the Sanjo. Uh, they say wines in this region, little hint of chalk. This wine has more of a delicious factor than the last wine, but it's lighter. I would almost, for the people that are wine drinkers, I almost feel like this has more Burgundian-like characteristics, um, where it's got its light finesse, but strong structure. I, I like to compare these kind of wines to like the uh, the matriarch in a family, you know, strong-willed older woman, you know, that runs shit, like grandma runs, oh, beep that out, I don't curse on, on Wine Library TV, I forgot. Um, and so, really well made, let me give it one more shot. I like this wine, very long finish, would pair extremely well with, you know, just cheese, or actually to me, and this, again, my palate, excuse this way, I don't recommend this for everybody, but this is actually a kind of wine that I would actually drink with fish. And I know look, people tend to go Pinot, and tend to go Gamay, and Beaujolais, and things of that nature, but I do think that this wine has a, enough of a balance, and is light enough, really, at the end of the day, to pull that off, but is a flavor profile that I enjoy. I would say caution to the people that really like big heavy cabs and explosive wines. I think this wine would be a little too light for you. And so to me, wine number two is a is a Pinot Noir uh, drinker's uh, Brunello. Wine number three. Much better, uh, much better numbers than I could just write. Yeah, yeah. Marker, I like it. Great color, great nose. Very smoky, a little hint of cigar. This smells like my old baseball glove in fifth grade that I used to chew on. So the mix of saliva and leather coming through on the nose. Really nice hint of red raspberry. This has by far the most exciting early indications of a serious wine. Uh, let's give it a whirl.
This is by far the creme de la creme so far. Very well structured, huge intense fruit, great mid palate transition to the finish. Feels like this wine can last for 15 to 20 years, easily on the tannin structure, yet elegant enough to be able to drink now. Think about a really high end, high cocoa count, dark chocolate wrapped in roses and biting into that, that's what you're getting here. Really, really long, dry finish. Still tasting it on the palate. Very exciting wine, very well structured, very good. To me, if you're able to deal with the sour fruit flavor here, instead of the candied fruit of California Cabs and Shiraz from Australia, you will freak for this wine. And, and to me, this uh, wine is extremely well made. By far my favorite. Um, pounded with red and black fruit. I kind of want to keep drinking this one. Really good wine. That's nice. Good. All right, let's see what wine number four has in store for us. Prince. Let's see what we're on. Again, it's really hard. I mean, the, you know, did we zoom on four? Uh, now I'm rusty. Um, you know, most Brunellos are going to be somewhat decent. The, the bigger concern I have is that you're going to spend 35 bucks for decent, and that's not interesting, especially in the competitive landscape of the wine world right now, where there's so many great wines for under 20 bucks. Now, this wine has a totally different nose. This has the most New World nose going. A lot of dark fruit. There's a little hint of smoke. You know what this actually smells like? It smells like post fumes of like firecrackers. It's got a little bit of, what is that in firecrackers? Gunpowder. Yeah, gunpowder, right? Good, okay. It's got a little hint of gunpowder, um, plum, cherries. This has the essence of, there's a little sugar on the nose if you know what that means. This has the essence of a new world. Uh, Brunello, let's see what's going on here. Boy, does this wine disappoint. <laughs> wow. Let me just taste that one more time. Like Martina, Contact Bobby, 518. Like Martina, Contact Bobby, 518. Yeah, I don't love that wine. Um, to me, this wine had such an interesting over the top. You know what this tastes like? I have the good analogy. Based on the nose, it's like if you see something pretty from afar, right? You know, and then as you get closer, it becomes less pretty, like a mountain or a human or whatever you want to go. But you know, I think I think that what's interesting about this wine is it set you up with the nose of being over the top and fruit forward. And I actually even already intuitively in my mind said, okay, how am I going to help people that don't know understand this is an old world region where there's some modern day winemakers that are starting to make their wines democratized and tastes more like the new world fruit. The kind of thing that wine nerds would be upset about, but the kind of thing that normal people enjoy because it just tastes better, it's more delicious, they're, they're attracted to the sugar and the fruit, what I would call the makeup, and then when you taste the wine, it's actually extremely hollow, very light, awkward and disjointed. It's kind of like a 15 year old putting on way too much makeup. You know what I mean? It's just, it's an awkward scenario. And so, I'm not happy about this wine and, and I will not be scoring it very well. All right, let's put these in order. Do -do -do, do -do -do, do -do -do. And here we go. For, oh, you like, this is the fun part, right? Here we go. All right, here we go. In order. In last place, that wine that I just dismantled with 85 points and I would highly recommend that nobody drinks this wine on earth. Oh my! I am very impressed by you! I totally forgot about the 85 point thing. That's incredible. Good job, Mott. You were on that. Uh, is the Ricci 2009 Brunello. Not good. Oh, we don't have the date. Oh, does this wine key have like the data of like the scores and stuff like that? Uh, it's like no. a weird, no? What so what, I need you guys over here. Help me here. Brandon didn't write the stuff on the back. How much is this and what is this scored by the mainstream press? Ricci Brunello 09. Liz, you on it? Yeah. What do you got? Uh, wait, that's the 09? Yes. 29.99. 29.99 and Nine. the score? 92 points Tim Atkin. 92 points Tim Atkin. Tim, you and I are just nowhere close uh, to the same page on this wine at all. Uh, the next wine, wine number one. I like this wine. Uh, 
I would go with 90 points. 90 points nine, minus, 89 points plus. Good solid wine. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it. Fasa Cole, 2009 Brunello. Team, need you here? Fasa Cole. 2009. No race. Brandon Real. Yep. It is 39.99. 39.99. Monica Larner, Wine Advocate. 92 points, the Wine Advocate. Uh, I'm a little bit lower than Monica on this wine. Uh, I liked it, but at 40 bucks, I wouldn't necessarily go screaming and buying it and say you have to have it. Now this next wine I liked a lot. Wine number two. Uh, I'm gonna go 90. I can get the other bottle. I'm sorry, what's that? You want, oh, you wanna see this? Got it. Uh, wine number two, I enjoyed quite a bit. I'd call it 91 to 92 points. Let's go actually go 92 points. I'm being a little bit, I feel like I'm being a little harsh because I want to like show people that, you know, let's go 92 points on this wine. I liked it quite a bit. And this wine is, here we go, got it. The Mate 2010 Brunello. The Mate is 49.99. 49.99. And it is 94 points suckling. 94 points shaved suckling. Yeah, I mean, extremely good wine. 50 bucks is probably the max I would pay for this, so I think it's right in line of what it's worth. Uh, but I thought it was extremely well made, great structure, and I think a lot of you enjoy this. This wine I freaked out for. Wine number three, let's score 94 points. This is a must have, I'm dying to see what this is. Very frankly, I'm going to a business meeting here in Wayne, New Jersey in a minute, but on the way down I'm gonna grab a bottle of this or two and take it home, so I'm pumped about this. I'm excited. Do you guys know what it is? You guys Yes, Cicilla de Sopra, it sure is. Cicilla de Sopra, 2010, Brunello. 96 James Suckling. 96 James Suckling, makes 39 sense. 39.99. This is a steal of a wine to me. This wine really shows 60, 70, maybe even $80 quality. Uh, you know what? what? I'm, I'm, I'm like watching your guys' vibes. I'm like, ex I, I'm excited to like, I feel like you guys are acceptance of my blind tasting. Like, hey, good job. You, um, you're proud of me? I, I lost a bet. Yeah. What's that? I thought you were going to, I thought Mate was I thought Mate was going to be I thought, got it. Mate liked a lot. But I've never had the sea filled this. Okay, good. You guys should yeah. definitely taste this yeah. immediately. Loved it. Uh, and it's 2010. Yeah, 2010 is a great vintage. That's one, one other thing that you guys should pay attention to. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. This was fun. It's good to get, it's almost like riding a bike. It's like riding a bike. Question of the day, right? Do I ask a question of the day? Do I do that? Yeah, that's where it's fun. Question of the day. Talk to me in the comment section. I would love for you to give me a little recap of your Italian red wine drinking tour and especially Brunello. You know, part one, have you had a Brunello? And if so, which one have you liked? I want to see a bunch of yes and no's. And number two, Italian red wines. Are you there? Have you been trying them? Keep trying them. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what my ending was for the show. You with a little, a little bit, bit of me. me. Thank you, Ma. You with a little bit of me. We're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.